Well, glory to God, he is alive. I tell you, if I was going to have to sing after that, <laughs> now that's, uh, whew, I couldn't do it. Praise God. Praise God, Jesus is alive. And because he is alive today, we have a hope that endures forever and ever. Join me, let's pray together this morning. Father in heaven, again, we want to thank you for Jesus Christ. We want to thank you that Jesus is alive today. We want to thank you that Jesus is saving people today. We want to thank you, O oh God, that Jesus is on the throne and he is in control of all things. Father, in the midst of the crisis situation that our world is going through right now, we understand, O oh Lord, that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you. Father God, I don't know how, but I know that in and through all of these things, you will be glorified. And God, I praise you and thank you right now. And Lord, as we move into your mighty word this morning, I just pray, O oh God, that you will give us the words to speak. Lord, that you will give us, anoint us with your power. May your Holy Spirit be real and live, Lord, speaking forth through this preacher. Lord, touching every individual that's hearing this message today. May their hearts be changed. May we truly understand that we don't need to be fearful in these times, but we need to simply trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, now I give this, this over to you. Lord, take control completely as you've already been doing throughout this service. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A hope that endures. Folks, there's not a whole lot to hope for if all you're doing is watching the news. And all you're doing is listening in to the world's rhetoric about how horrible, how terrible everything is in our world today. There's no hope in any of that. Because they're not offering any hope. Because they don't know. They can simply speculate what tomorrow may hold. And if you do this, this might happen. Let me tell you something today. There's one who has everything in this world in the palm of his hand. There's one today that, that knows what tomorrow holds. There's one that knows what the day after tomorrow holds. And when we put our hope and our confidence and our trust into him, we have no need to fear. We simply trust in him. Mark chapter 16. Beginning with verse 1, reading down through verse 8 this morning. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could go and anoint him, anoint the body of Jesus in the tomb. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb at sunrise. They were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb for us? But looking up, they observed that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. And they were amazed and alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he told them. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has been resurrected. He is not here. See the place where they put him. But go, tell his disciples, tell Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. So they went out and started running from the tomb because trembling and astonishment overwhelmed them. And they said nothing to anyone since they were afraid. Praise God for his word today. 
Folks, today we are celebrating Easter, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's been nearly 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead. On that early Sunday morning, the ladies, they arrive at the tomb of Jesus only to find it's empty. The ladies ran to share the news with the disciples of Jesus. And after hearing the news, the disciples ran to the tomb and it most certainly was empty. Jesus had declared to them that he would rise from the grave and now they were beginning to realize the truthfulness of what he had been telling them. The tomb was empty. Praise God, Jesus was gone. Can you imagine? Think about this for a moment. Can you imagine the struggle that went on behind the scenes in that tomb earlier that morning? Can you imagine all the powers of hell struggling with all their might to hinder the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead? But let me tell you something, hell lacked the power. God the Father stepped in and with a loud shout, he cried out, Arise, my son! The grave no longer has a hold on you. And with that shout, the eyes of Jesus popped open. He swung his, head, his legs over the side of the stone his body had been laid upon. And he stood up in all power and glory. For death, hell, and the grave were defeated. Victory had been achieved and Jesus was alive. Then God dispatched an angel to the earth. And as this angel's foot hit the ground, an earthquake struck, and the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Let me tell you something. Let me give you an assurance today. That stone didn't roll away to let Jesus out. That stone rolled away so the ladies could look in, so the disciples could look in, so they could declare in all truthfulness, He has been resurrected. He is not here. Perhaps you're wondering today, what's the real result of this resurrection? What difference does it really make? Does it really make any difference? I want to allow Peter to address that for a moment in 1 Peter 1, beginning with verse 3. Peter writes these words. He says, praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is, get this, imperishable, that is uncorrupted, that is unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to struggle in various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold which perishes though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You love him, though you have not seen him. And though not seeing him, now you believe in him and you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Oh, what a glorious, glorious, magnificent passage there that Peter has given to us. The main body of this first letter from Peter begins in verse 3, and I want to read it for you again. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, Peter had penned these words roughly 30 years after Christ's death and resurrection. He was writing this letter as an encouragement to the persecuted Christians of Asia Minor. Peter was addressing those who were feeling discouraged. Is that you today? Those who were feeling displaced and depressed or in danger. 
many of you out there today can, can, can agree with this. You feel these things going on in your own heart and life. His message to them as well as to you and I today was to take a hold of your living hope through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice again the words of the last, ver last part of verse 3. He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What we find in this is that God has given to each one of us the opportunity to gain access to a new birth. The new birth grants us a living hope which comes about because of the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. Certainly these thoughts will conjure up some questions in many of your minds. Questions like, so what is this living hope that Peter is talking about? What is the hope we now have that only the resurrection of Jesus Christ can give? I want to answer these questions for you today. I want to undertake to gain a broader understanding of hope. Simple word, four letters, H-O-P-E, hope. And I want to look at it from three different perspectives today. I want to look at it as a living hope, a future hope, and a present hope. I want to begin by considering hope from the perspective of a living hope. Let me remind you what Peter said in 1 Peter 1.3. According to what? His great mercy. He has given. Notice, notice how God is engaged in all of this. It's His great mercy. He is the one. He is the giver. Giving us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A living hope. What is that? It's a hope that never dies. It's a hope that never goes away. Those who have been born again have a living hope through their new life in Jesus Christ. This constantly living hope is that the physical death that we all must one day venture through is not the end. I'm not afraid of the grave. Because I know that immediately upon my last breath here on this earth, I know that though this dead body goes into the ground, I know that the real living me is going to be in the presence of God Almighty forever. We understand that outside the rapture, death is certain for all. But another certainty is the Christian's hope of eternal life. The Christian's hope in Christ is as certain and as sure as the fact that Jesus is alive today. Glory to God. We're joining together today to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he arose from the death, we know that death is not the end. We know that evil doesn't win. We know that God forgives. We know new life is an option now. We know a better tomorrow is coming. And we can rest assured in the fact that because Jesus is alive today, we have a living and a certain hope that when we die, we will live again. Glory to his name. As we move forward, I want to do so considering hope from the perspective of a future hope. Take a look at what 1 Peter 1.4 tells us. That a living hope takes us what? Into an inheritance that is imperishable, that is uncorrupted and unfading, that is kept in heaven for you. Folks, let me assure you of something. Our hope is not only for this moment in time, but our hope that God is guaranteeing us, that God is promising us today, carries with it the promise of a better tomorrow. Notice that promise is of a better tomorrow. One that is imper imperishable and uncorrupted and unfading. As I've already stated, we're all going to eventually die. But there is no need to fear death for the believer because what we gain is so far superior to what we have now. 
Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He saw that, yes, right now in this life, I am going to do everything I can to live for Christ. But I am anticipating, I am looking forward to, I am greatly uh, excited about what is in store for me. And that's what you need to be today. Through Jesus Christ, you can be excited for what God has in store for you. The promise of what is far superior awaits all of us in the heavenlies. I hear people say, I know I have to die, I just don't want to today. And I can understand that thought. We've got so much that we want to do, so many things we need to take care of. Let me tell you, I have no fear of dying. I have no fear of the coronavirus. If God determines to take me out by that virus, whatever manner it may be, all I can say is, God, I'm in your hands. Do with me whatever you see fit. As Jesus was preparing for his death, he promised his disciples this beautiful promise in John 14, 2. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Folks, let me tell you something. That's shouting words there. That gives you a reason in your heart to shout out, Hallelujah, praise the Lord today. Jesus has gone away to prepare a place for me. And he went on to say, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. This old earth has nothing to compare with what Jesus has been preparing for you and I. Oh, what a place that will be. If you're a believer today, your hope allows you to see your future in the more positive of ways. Therefore, what it should produce in you is the most positive results in all of our present lives. Are you living for Jesus today? Do those around you know that you're living for Jesus today? Are you the Sunday Christian or are you the the all-the-time Christian? Is there such a thing as a Sunday Christian? I know there are a lot of people who sit in a lot of church pews who say they're Christians, but on Monday morning I have to question, is that really true? Your life is not evidencing what you're telling me. And I have to question these individuals because every day of your life should be the same. Not just because you've walked into the church and that's going to automatically transform you. That's automatically going to change how you act. People see you when you're out in the world. And I do hope they're seeing Jesus in you. Finally, I want to consider hope from the perspective of a present hope. You and I have a present hope right this minute. We can have this hope. 1 Peter 5 and 6. You are being, right now, you are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to struggle in various trials. Folks, let me assure you once again, we have no reason whatsoever to fear or to fret anything that might come against us in this world because our present living hope places us under God's protection through our simple trust and faith in Him. It isn't through our own power, folks. Listen to me. It's God's power that makes this available to us. The news media, things others may say or do, can certainly stir up great fear within your life if you allow it to. But let me tell you something. God has a better way. It's simply putting our trust in Him. Folks, let me tell you something. You can declare with me today, I am a child of God. I am a king's kid. I am sheltered in His arms of protection. If my God determines that it's my time to be infected with corona, it's going to happen with or without a mask, with or without social distancing or anything else. I simply trust that God has his hand of protection upon me because the scripture tells me so. 
I understand Romans 8.28 says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. I've placed my life into the hands of all God, Almighty God. I trust Him with my life. I trust everything He determines to do with me that He may be glorified in and through all things regardless of what may happen to me. Verse 6 assures me that I'm going to have struggles in this life with various trials and tribulations, but I trust that in those things, God is working to strengthen me for the future glory with Him and as a part of His kingdom. Listen closely now. As I begin to wrap this up, I am in no way advocating for any kind of rebellion in times of, Christ, uh, of crisis. But what I am saying to you today is that we must learn to follow Christ above all things. We have a kingdom duty. To do what? To advocate, to stand in the gap for the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. We have a duty, folks. You have a duty as a child of God to be pressing forth the kingdom of God. To do what? To build it. To grow it. Regardless of what others may dictate, you and I have a responsibility today. There is only one time in the New Testament church do I find that Jesus told anybody to go hunker down. And that was as he was preparing to leave this earth, he said, hunker down until the Holy Spirit comes. And then once the Holy Spirit came and descended upon that church, I don't ever see again that the Christians were told to hunker down. I see them going forth. I see them sharing the good news of Jesus. I see them going into places where they were going to be persecuted, where they were going to be ridiculed, where their lives were in danger, and many of them lost their lives because they continued to go against the things that the Roman government was telling them because they were under the direct order from the kingdom of God to go make disciples. And that kingdom order still stands today. In Acts 5, the disciples were under arrest for publicly proclaiming the truths of Jesus Christ. The officials before them told them that we've already told you once, don't do this. And we're telling you again, don't do this ever again. The disciples' response was very simple. We must obey God rather than men. Folks, this hope that I'm talking about today, it's built upon our obedience to God. When we believe in God, we obey God. Folks, we have a living hope today. We have the promise of a future hope that is beyond anything that you and I can ever imagine. We also have a present hope that God will be with us and He will continue by His power to protect us. Our hope, folks, is based upon the solid evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrected Christ, He is a life-transforming Christ. Has He transformed your life? Have you received that hope that I'm talking about today, that hope that endures for all eternity? If not, today needs to be your day. God the Father offers you a living hope that you can have and maintain by faith. He has done all the impossible parts so that all you have to do is surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. Listen, listen very closely. If you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you need to take care of that business today. You need to get serious with God. You need to confess that you are a sinner, that you understand that the cost of sin is death, and you understand that you need Jesus Christ because He alone, through His resurrected power, through His death on the cross, that is the only means by which man can be saved. 
Have you turned to the cross? Have you cried out to Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to him? If not, today needs to be your day. I want to encourage you, if you're out there and you need to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to put a little prayer out there for you. Folks, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the belief in your heart that Jesus Christ is alive today is what saves you. But something very simple, if you're out there today and you need to invite Christ to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray a prayer like this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. And that this guarantees that your death was sufficient to pay for all my sins. And therefore, God is for me, not against me. You yourself, O oh God, are alive today and with me to help forever. And I pray that you will help me now to hope fully in all the promises that you have made that I might have the living hope that the pastor's talking about today, that I may have a future hope and a present hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, let me pray with you. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that is in Jesus Christ alone. And that we can access today. Lord, I just ask you, I ask you, oh God, to touch the hearts and lives of every person that's hearing today. Lord, help them to trade their fear for faith. Help them, oh God, to begin to trust in you and find their confidence in you. Lord God, I, I pray uh, against this epidemic. I pray, oh God, that you would, you would heal those that are infected by it. I pray, oh God, that you would release this thing from our world today, Lord, and set us free from this disease. But God, I understand also that we've not been as we should be. And that verse goes back if your people, us, the church will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face then we're going to hear from heaven lord god i pray today for the church across america and in the western world and even around the world oh god today may there's a begin to 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 brighten up and to bring to life revival in our hearts and lives that will spread across our nation and around our world in anticipation of the soon arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we love you today. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed Resurrection Day to you all. Have a great day. God bless you.